Hi, I'm Melissa Williams Murphy, and welcome to Class at Home with the I Write Organization. I'm here with my writing buddy, I the Guy, who also happens to be the mascot at I Write, to get all of you inspired to create characters and stories. Each week, you're gonna get to hear from authors and illustrators. Some of them are even kids. So be sure to grab your brainstorming notebooks, maybe even a sketch pad, and definitely a pencil or a pen because your imaginations are going to soar as we create characters, illustrations, stories, and even some comics together each week at home. Now, if you need more resources, be sure to check out our website at www.iwrite.org. We have all kinds of creative writing and illustration activities for kids of all ages. We even have an annual publishing contest for kids to become professionally published authors and illustrators. So be sure to check us out. All right, I the guy, are you ready to meet some of our superstars? I thought so. Let's go ahead and see what all of the kid authors and illustrators are up to at iWrite. I the guy. Today might just be my favorite day for all the kids at home. Are you raising your hand? Yes, of course we're gonna play I spy I the guy. So be counting every time you see I the guy pop up on the screen. And one of those surprise I the guys will be giving us a clue on what kind of illustration we will get to do at the very end with Ryan Shaw. Pretty sure it's his favorite thing to illustrate. Besides you, I the guy. Okay, can we get back to why I'm so excited about today? All right, well, you know how much I love stories. I mean, there's so many different ways to tell a story. We all have a story inside of us. We just have to figure out the creative way that we wanna share it with the world. So today, we're gonna get to hear how artists, actors, and musicians use their talent to share their story. My name is Grant Monier. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I am an artist, an eco artist to be exact. I tell my story through recycled art. Everything you see behind me are my eco art masterpieces created with recycled materials. So people always ask me, what is eco art? Eco art is short for ecological art. It is a form of environmental art created by an artist who is concerned about local and global environmental crisis. In my art, I like to use recycled paper and other recycled materials as I do my part to keep the earth green and clean. These are just a few of my pieces. I have over 200 originals. I create my pieces based on what I have at home, such as posters, magazines, wallpaper, and puzzles. I use a lot of paper materials in my art, but I do have a signature mark, a special style that I use. It has not been done before based on internet information. I use hundreds of recycled puzzles to create my art, but I peel these puzzles to be paper thin and use the color in my art. Next, I have my end of summer sunflower that I created in 2019. I was inspired by the great Vincent Van Gogh who created his sunflowers back in 1888, 131 years ago. After I visited the Van Gogh exhibit, I was inspired to use magazines like National Geographic and wallpaper, posters, and puzzles to create my own sunflowers. 
And we have a book, Grant the Dick Saw Giraffe, Different is More. My mother, Julie Coy, is the author, and I am the illustrator. Since creating this original art piece in 2016, My Giraffe has turned into a national bestseller children's book. And we have a friend who joins us when we travel and read during story time. Hello, Grant. Good to see you. It's based on my personal story, living with challenges, but finding my talent and my abilities through art. Thank you again for your time. My name is Grant Monier, the eco artist, and I tell my story through art. Hi, my name is Lizzie, and I'll be teaching y'all how to make a balloon animal giraffe. The only materials you'll need will be a balloon pump. To make your balloon animal giraffe, you'll start off by twisting two small bubbles of the same size. Then, you'll twist those two bubbles together. After that, you will take the slack and run it through the twist in the bubbles in order to keep it nice and secure. So it won't come undone, and it should look like this. Now, you'll twist a small bubble and make a pinch twist out of it. This will be the giraffe's lower lip. Once you're done, it should look like this. Next, you'll twist a bubble that is about two inches long for the giraffe's face. Now, we're gonna make the horns. To make the horns, you'll twist four bubbles. The first and last bubbles will be slightly bigger than the two middle bubbles. Once you have all four bubbles, you'll twist them together like this. Okay, so now we're done with the head. So we're gonna move over to the other side of the balloon. And if you have a little bit of a tail like this, and just squeeze it so it fills up. Now you're gonna twist a small segment for the tail and then make two slightly bigger bubbles for the legs and then twist those two together. Then you're gonna make a small bubble for the body of the giraffe and then repeat the same process for the legs. Now that you've completed this step, you can bend the giraffe neck into an S in order to make it look curved. And at the bends of the S, you can squeeze the two ends to make it curved. Then for the spot, kind of scribble, giraffe pattern, and there you go, there you have your giraffe. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed learning how to make a balloon animal giraffe. Now that was pretty cool. Our next guest, I've known for over 10 years. He used to be a writing student of mine, He's been published at I Write multiple times. Let's meet actor and professional speaker Chase Alexander and get some tips on how to bring scripts to life to tell a story. Hi, I'm Chase, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about story time, specifically script writing. And that's anytime you're making a story for either film or the stage. Basically, anytime you want to act it out. So, let's get right to it. The first thing you want to do when you're making your script is come up with where it's happening. So your big idea, your setting, it could either be outer space or maybe the Wild West, a gymnasium or a park, or even at home. Wherever you think is a fun place to tell your story. Next, you want to talk about who the story is about. It'll be your characters. That can be an astronaut, or maybe a cowboy, a sheriff, or a teacher. Anything and anybody you think will be interesting, you can tell about them. But you have to let us know what makes them interesting. So come up with something that makes them them. Whether it's an interesting accent, or a certain way they carry themselves, maybe walk, or something that was really cool that happened in their backstory. Anything that would make the audience fall in love with them. Next, you're going to talk about what the story's going to be about. Why they're going through what they're going through. What makes it a story we care about. 
And that's your part. So, is it a race against time to get to the moon? Maybe you have to find the bad guys and bring them to justice. Or it's the biggest game in their lives and they have to win. Whatever it is, make it fun. Make it you. But how do we communicate what we see to the audience? That brings us to our stage direction. It's just a fancy way of saying what the character does or their actions. So that can be running or typing on a computer, maybe picking something up or jumping over something. Anything you want it to be, anything that your character is going to be doing, you put that in a stage direction. And then finally, I want to talk about what they're saying. That brings us to our dialogue. Anything that the characters say within the story to one another. That can be a conversation about the weather, or maybe they forgot something, or there's a big test that's coming up and they want to get the answers. Anything that they would say to each other, you want to put in your dialogue. But something important to remember is we can see it. Everything that is going to be on either film or television or even on stage, we can see what the characters are doing. So we don't have to get into as much detail as we would in a short story or even a book. So a good rule of thumb is to have twice as much stage direction as you do dialogue. And a good way to remember that is actions speak louder than words. So if you have your idea and your setting or where the script is taking place, then you have your characters or who is in the script and what's happening to them. Then you have three, the plot, which is what's happening in the story. Then you have your stage directions, what they're actually doing. And then finally you have your dialogue, what they're saying. If you have all those, you're on your way to make an amazing script. And I can't wait to see it. Hi, my name is Zoe Hess and I'm the author of The Birthday of an Angel. I love writing because it is a way for people to express themselves and make a difference in the world. I'm Alex, and I'm the author of Spark. I write in order to bring my fantasies to life. Hi, I'm Cassidy Cisco. I am the author of Ever, A Dragon's Curse. I write because I enjoy it. Hi, my name is Juliet Hess, and I am the writer of the short story Cowboy in the eighth anthology of I Write. I love writing because writing unlocks a whole new door of creativity and enjoyment for people of all ages. Hi, my name is William Patrick Cook, and I'm the author of Crunch Time and Madagascar. I like to write because I can have an idea and put it on a piece of paper and see it thrive and be so creative in so many different ways. It's really cool. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Itzel Ramirez, and I was born in New York City, but recently moved to Houston, where I was one of the authors chosen to be published in a book called I Write Short Stories by Kids for Kids. And today, I will be reading you guys my poem that I wrote called Mexico the Beautiful. Mexico is a beautiful place. There's lots of space and delicious foods to taste. People and kids enjoy this magical place. Lots of caves to explore these days. There are lots of plants wherever you go. Cactus, agave, and orchids all grow. Orchids are beautiful flowers that bloom, so beautiful just like the moon. One last thing is I just want to say someone who inspired me to write this poem was Miss Cherry, because when I was learning with her, she taught me all these new things and all the beautiful words that came out of her mouth led me to this poem. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you, Itzel, for sharing your beautiful poetry. I'm sure your teacher, Miss Cherry, is very proud. Now it's time to hear how the words inside a picture book were actually the lyrics to a song. Our next guest wrote and illustrated the book Purple Song, which was inspired by years of stories from the children at Texas Children's Hospital. The founder of Purple Songs Can Fly 
turned a musical treble clef with wings into a character to encourage children who might be feeling lonely. We're first going to hear the book read by Lisa Scheinbaum and then sung by the founder of Purple Songs Can Fly, Anita Cruz. Sometimes this living on earth can be tough. When you feel all alone, it can be really rough. You might shed a few tears. You might let out a cry. You might feel there are only dark clouds in the sky. But just when you think there's no one who hears, there are those who are listening with round, friendly ears. There is someone who notices wide teardrop waves. There is someone who hears what your heart has to say. There is someone who listens and follows your sounds. And those someones are making their way to you now. Under the water, up in the air, riding the waves, your true friends always care. Because you're never alone, even when things go wrong. Because your friends gather round and create a new song. So whenever this living on earth gets too tough, let your friends and your purple song lift you back up. Sometimes this living on earth can be tough When you feel all alone it can be really rough You might shed a few tears, you might let out a cry You might feel there are only dark clouds in the sky But just when you think there is no one who hears There are those who are listening with round friendly ears There is someone who notices why teardrop waves There is someone who hears what your heart has to say There is someone who listens and follows your sounds And those someones are making their way to you now Under the water, up in the air Riding the waves, your true friends always care Cause you're never alone even when things go wrong Cause your friends gather round and create a new song So whenever this living on earth gets too tough Let your friends and your purple song Lift you back up Lift you back up I hope you enjoyed getting to meet all of our storytellers. What would you use to tell a story? Would you use art, music, or maybe the theater? Now we're going to get to hear from Ryan Shaw. I would like to learn a little bit more about his story and one of the characters that he enjoys creating, besides I the Guy, of course. Does anybody have a wild guess? We gave away a clue in the episode. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hello, illustrator Ryan Shaw here once again with uh, this week's drawing lesson. And today's lesson is going to be out of this world. We are going to draw this space alien flying in his flying saucer. So go ahead and get your paper, your pencil, and your coloring tools, and let's go ahead and get started with this week's lesson. All right, now that you have your pencil and your paper at hand, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing the eyeball and then, you know, just pretty much the head with some pointy ears and antenna. Now I'm drawing kind of the cylinder shape for the top hatch and then the bottom of the flying saucer. 
and then the, the window at the top. So I'm sketching all that out, added some little lights around it, and then I'm going over it with my pen, you know, and just kind of inking it slowly, nice, slow, uh, you know, simple lines, but you don't want to press too hard even while you ink because uh, you lose control and you can kind of stray off. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just following my guidelines. And remember, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, but remember to always press uh, very gently and light when you're sketching out your pencil lines because what you're going to do is erase them uh, once you get all these ink lines down. I love drawing, uh, you know, just random cartoon characters. Uh, aliens are particularly fun for me because uh, you can just use your imagination and make them look how you want. Like this guy I gave him one eye and pointy teeth and pointy ears, but he still looks friendly. You know, he, looks, uh, he wouldn't scare me if he came down. I kind of want to talk to him. And uh, it's really cool with this brush pen because you can get thick lines. You know, and it's just all about practice and, and controlling those lines when you use the pens. And I use different size ones, but you can use any kind of pen you like when you trace your art. Or you can even go in pencil and just make the lines darker once you got uh, your, your lines down that you're going to use. So we're just about wrapped up here with inking. What I'm going to do now is erase all the pencil lines I don't need and then brush it off. Brush off the debris. I forgot to add the tongue in there. And then what I'm going to do is just color them. I'm going to make this guy green. Maybe you want to make them purple when you color yours. It's all up to you how creative you want to be when you create your own cartoon characters. So I'm making this guy kind of a standard green, kind of a light green. And I like coloring with markers because you get a really smooth uh, tone down when you color. And then I'm going to make the inside of the eye kind of like a dark, dark yellow, kind of orangish. Same for the teeth, and then I'm going to use kind of a darker green for the tongue, and then a dark gray for the inside of the mouth. Same for the inside where the, I guess the opening is there. And then I'm using kind of a dark red around the lid where the, the I guess the little windshield is. So it's cool to mix up colors. Um, I'm just doing flat colors. Right here's a lighter red which I thought would be a cool little, you know, slight contrast. But it's keeping it within the same color family. And remember, just smooth, you know, strokes. All about, uh, with, with art, it's about relaxing. This should be something that relaxes you, something that uh, you have fun with. I do it every day, and I hope, you know, you guys stay creative while we're indoors and um, come up with some of your best stories and some of your best art that you've ever done. Now's the time to do it. So uh, if you see, I'm kind of coloring the, the bottom uh, with that same, you know, dark yellow, kind of orangey color. And then I'm going to color the bottom of the saucer with a little bit of red. And there you have it. There's a space alien. And I'm going to actually color in some blue here for the windshield area. And he is pretty much done. All right, so pat yourself on the back for a job well done, and remember to stay safe and stay creative. Take care. We had so much fun with everyone at home, didn't we, I the guy? I have a feeling some kids at home will be entering our publishing contest soon. But right now, do you know what time it is? It's time for I Spy, I the Guy. How many I the Guys did you see on today's episode? The correct number is four. Well, it's time to go. Like we always say, time flies when you're learning and having fun. But we would love to hear from some of you at home. I know I the Guy loves getting emails and meeting new writers. And if you want more writing activities to do all summer long, be sure to visit iWrite.org. We can't wait to hear from all of you. Bye.